Last year, I made my most viewed video on YouTube with over 100,000 views. I made that video because we went into lockdown and I was looking for something new to try in the back garden. 18 months on and I now find myself making a similar video because yesterday I tested positive for COVID-19 and I now have to isolate for 10 days. The big difference between the two videos is going to be the time of year. The last video was shot in the spring with longer days and better weather. This time the days are short, the weather is damp and I feel quite poorly. The garden's wildlife has been slow recently, but that didn't stop a sparrow hawk from bringing down his prey late yesterday afternoon. I watched him feed on his capture for a good 20 minutes, but unfortunately it was too dark to photograph or video, and I think the fox finished off the carcass during the night. Just like the last video, I'm going to set up some dead logs to act as props and perches but the placement of them is the important factor. I want a nice blurred background and so the distance between me and the subject and the distance between the subject and the background is very important. I explain and demonstrate this in a previous video and so I'll leave the link to that video in the description below. I'm still using the log saw horse when I can remember how to use it to support one of my main logs as this acts as a good platform for the birds to land on, but moreover, it acts as a good bird feeder. I also have another dead and gnarly log that I'm hoping I'll be able to use to great effect. Setting up the props can take quite a while, as it's the minor tweaks here and there that can make all the difference. And even when you think you've got the setup arranged perfectly, there's always a chance that you'll have to move it once you start shooting and the birds start landing. And so at this stage, it really is a case of just trying to get set up as close as possible. Along with the positioning of the props, the background colouring and lighting is also important. But I may not be able to achieve everything I want at this time of year because the sun is low. My backdrops are either brown conifers or evergreens. And so I just need to play around with whatever looks best for the time of year and the light that I've got available to me. In addition to the sawhorse, I also have a base that's usually used to support a Christmas tree. And with its four large thumb screws, it works a tree in supporting the dead log. Although the log does require a little bit of trimming here and there. Another thing I have to consider when setting up is how badly I'm going to be affected by the virus. And so another option I have open to me is to shoot from the summer house where it's going to be warmer and less damp so the air doesn't affect my chest. There's an evergreen in one of the borders so I could use that as a background and still keep the props close to the apple tree. I think the evergreen will work okay but again the prop could do with some trimming as it's too tall and shows off too much of the kitchen window. I'd really like to be outside for longer and make further additions to the setup, but unfortunately I can already feel the damp air causing my chest to tighten, and so I think I'll just set up the food and call it a day today. I mentioned at the start of the video that the gardener's wildlife has been slow, but I'm sure that's my fault as recently we've been quite lazy and only venture from the back door to the bird table to feed them. The nuts in the bird feeder have congealed and covered in mouldy slime, but after a quick scrape and a kettle of boiling water to clean it, it's good enough to restock. I'm filling the other feeder with a mixed winter seed that I just buy from Wilco. And in the last feeder, it's the good old faithful suet balls. I was hoping to place some suet balls inside the log's hole, but it was far too deep, and so I'll just screw a cage to the front of it and see how I get on. Obviously the cage won't be seen in any of the photos, as it's the top of the perch that I'm hoping the birds will land on. A few more suet balls in the horizontal log just to boost the supplies, and I think we're done for today.
The following morning, Helen noticed that there were some Eurasian jays on the lawn close to the apple tree. But by the time I got into position, they were long gone. And the only birds taking advantage of the winter feast was the robin and the blackbird. I've never photographed a jay before, but I've always admired its colours and so I was hoping they would make a return over the next few days. I waited in the hide for well over an hour and nothing landed. I felt a little exposed just by sitting by an open door and I knew that I'd have to address that, not just for the birds but for my own peace of mind. Based on yesterday's energy levels, I estimated that I had one, maybe two hours of fight in me before I would need to collapse in a chair and relax. Plus, I didn't want to be outside for too long in the damp air, and so I decided to carry out a little, but long overdue, housekeeping around the new setup. The water level in the pond is high, and the leaf catcher had popped up, causing the filters to make a gurgling noise. With the pond a little tidier than before, it was time to go back inside the hide and make it more comfortable for the week ahead. I decided to add some camo netting to the doorway, as I've heard that the jays can be a nervous bird. Plus, if I feel secluded and stealth-like, the more relaxed I become, which also leads to a more enjoyable experience when photographing the birds. Apart from getting myself a more comfier chair, I was now happy with my setup and was ready to revisit in the morning and to see if the jays would return. To be successful in most things, the key is to understand it first. That's why on day three I decided to get set up while it was dark. That way I could observe their feeding habits and what birds were likely to appear in the garden. The minor efforts of the last two days had paid off and the setup was quick and comfortable, which was good, as I'd woken up that morning without my sense of smell and I was feeling pretty washed out from being so active over the last 48 hours. To say the activity and photographic opportunities were slow would be an understatement. I could see a few great or blue tits amongst the treetops, but nothing was landing on the hanging bird feeders. That's my fault, I guess, for neglecting them for so long. I did have an early visit from the robin, followed by a blackbird and some pigeons, but that was pretty much it. Then out of nowhere, the jay landed. But as I reached for the camera controls, it was gone. Damn it, was that me? Did it see my hand flash up to the camera from behind the netting? Would it have flown off anyway? Was it just a coincidence? I hate all of these possibilities, as it's hard to rectify if you don't know the reason. A short while after, a squirrel turned up, which was nice. I often see it in the garden, but I've yet to be in the right place at the right time to photograph it. It was obviously searching for food, and I thought it would take the suet balls from the open log, but instead it went for the peanuts that was locked away in the bird feeder. I never managed to take a clean photo of him, but I knew I had to stock the log with loose peanuts if I wanted him to hang around in future. In the afternoon, I returned for an hour just to see what was about, and not surprisingly, the garden was very quiet. The only thing that was there consistently was the pigeon, who was feasting on the loose peanuts. I don't know why, but this really surprised me. I always thought it was the smaller birds who pecked at them in the feeders, not the larger birds who were swallowing them whole. Either way, I'd restock and hopefully I'd get to see the squirrel the following morning. The following morning, the jay returned early, but before he arrived, I'd already framed up the shot and focused on the top of the vertical perch. As it was fairly dark, I didn't try to refocus on the bird when it landed, as I was fearful that the lens would start hunting and I'd simply miss the shot altogether. The light levels were extremely low, and the backdrop made everything look even darker still. But as I said, I didn't want to play around with the focusing because as far as I knew, this may be my only opportunity to photograph the jay. The shot didn't look great on the back of the camera, and it looked even worse when I got it on the big screen. But if that was to be my only shot, then it was better than nothing, and a low benchmark to which I could improve upon. 
Up until this point, the Jays would arrive for a few minutes, have a look around and then fly off for hours on end. Hence why I was so eager to get the shot. But what I'd accidentally done is laid on a banquet for them in the form of loose peanuts. Remember, I'd only placed the peanuts on the log to attract the squirrels, but now the Jays kept coming back. And each time it landed, it seemed to stay for longer, which made me more confident in their return. Each time it flew off, I think, it'll be back, and it did. Whereas previously, when it flew off, I think, well, that's it now for a few hours, and it was. I couldn't believe its appetite for the peanuts, but the longer it stayed, the more opportunities I had to photograph it. I was now firing off shots at regular intervals, but it soon became apparent that the background was spoiling the photos. Because of the Jay's appetite for the peanuts, I was confident that I could move the props and they would still return at some point. This is not the best angle, but it was an angle and a background that I could work with. It didn't take long for the jays to reappear and for them to start feeding again. They didn't land on the vertical prop much, but when they did, the new background certainly made for a more pleasing image. It's been a fun few days, and I'm hoping that the next half of my quarantine period will be just as enjoyable. So far, I've been quite lucky to avoid any major symptoms that can be associated with the virus but I do have to set myself time limitations and make sure I rest at home in the warm at regular intervals. Thanks for watching, and if you've enjoyed this video, then please feel free to share it on social media and consider subscribing to the channel. But as always, be kind and stay safe.